the sister of the sun, the key to finding alien life. There can be no doubt that stars are all female, because they're hot. They create life, and if they're anything like my girlfriend, they are big angry balls of exploding gas who secretly hate me. But is our sun an only child, or doesn't have siblings? According to long-standing research, most stars are born in groups, which means that our own solar overlord has families scattered out there in the cosmos. So, where are they? How can we find them? And why might a family reunion with our sun's relatives lead to the discovery of life on other worlds? Allow me to illuminate you, dear viewers, as we explore how finding our sun's sister stars may be the key to discovering alien life. The Birth of Stars Stars are born of chaos and order. First the chaos. Much of our universe may seem empty, but the space between the stars and planets is littered with molecular gas, dust particles, and automobiles once owned by crazy alien billionaires. Huge clouds of this dust and gas can form out in the depths of interstellar space, but it only takes a small cloud called a dense core to create a star. Instability within these clouds causes warm knots to appear, and these knots begin accumulating ever more gas and dust gradually over time. Now, here comes the order. As gravity continues to exert its influence on the knot, it becomes ever more unstable, eventually collapsing in on itself, causing the material at the center to heat up rapidly. This hot core is known as a protostar, as it is still in the process of gathering mass from its surrounding molecular cloud. Such a process takes around one million years for a star of one solar mass, with the density of the surrounding cloud being the deciding factor on how large the resulting star turns out. Imagine putting a one-month-old baby in a room full of burritos and another in a room with just one burrito. One of those babies will grow to a gargantuan size, whereas the other one will earn you a call from the Child Protective Services. It is thought that the universe's very first stars formed using a similar process when the universe was just 200 million years old. Gravity pulled together the matter left over from the Big Bang to form areas of density, which then grew and grew over another 200 million years before collapsing, causing nuclear fusion to occur at the core. This is how Population 1 stars were made, the very first stars which are highly metallic and which are mostly found within the spiral arms of galaxies like our Milky Way. Population 1 stars were once thought to be more likely to have planets in orbit around them due to their high metal content, but more recent evidence suggests this may not be the case. Either way, we know for a fact that at least one Population 1 star has planets in orbit around it, and one of them contains life, because our very own Sun is a Population 1 star. And when it was born, it may not have been born alone. Two's Company In 2013, astronomers witnessed the birth of a massive star 100 times the size of our Sun, which took place 10,000 light-years away from Earth. Using the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array Telescope in Chile, astronomers observed matter being pulled into one giant stellar womb, which is an excellent drag queen name and watched as gravity caused the center of the gas cloud to form a protostellar core. Such large stars are rare in the universe, with only one out of every 10,000 stars in the Milky Way ever reaching such a massive mass of massiveness. According to three-dimensional computer models, most areas of collapsing gas and dust separate into two or three stars as opposed to one. But even when massive stars form, most of the theories for their development include the prior existence of several small stars, either through the coalescence of small low-mass stars or the seeding of large stars by their local low-mass counterparts, who drag in material from beyond their reach. That last theory is kind of like capitalism in a way, since the little stars feed the big stars the things they cannot obtain themselves, with every donation strengthening the dominant relationship of the larger star, until the low-mass stars form a union, that is. This stellar origin story is believed to explain why most of the stars in our Milky Way appear in twos or threes, but in a wider context, stars are born in much larger numbers than that. Within a single gas cloud, you could have hundreds or thousands of stars all being born in different parts, 
with between 80 and 90 percent of stars being born in groups of 100 or more. As with any family, time and huge gravitational forces cause these groups to break up, scattering those solar siblings across various parts of the galaxy. And this is also true of our Sun. So what if the Sun wanted to get back in touch with its family because, you know, it needs some cash or a place to stay? Oh, that's easy. We just pull a Mari Povich on the universe and take a cosmic DNA test. Cosmic DNA If you want to prove that your brother is definitely your brother before you donate that kidney, you take a DNA test, because this would prove whether or not you're related. The same is true of stars, as since the chemical composition of every star-forming gas cloud is unique, long-lost stellar siblings can be traced back to a single family cloud through the analysis of their chemical makeup. Find a star with the same percentage of certain elements as your own and bang, you got a match. Time to hit that deadbeat gas cloud up for support payments. Unfortunately, this process is not as easy as we've made it sound. Or at least it wasn't until now. The chemical composition of stars has been measurable for over a hundred years, but only recently have we refined this process in a way which allows us to measure huge numbers of stars all at once. The Global Archaeology Survey uses the Anglo-Australian telescope fitted with the Hermes spectrograph to measure 360 stars in one big go. And with 340,000 stars having been analyzed thus far, project head Dr. Gayandi De Silva believes this work will eventually enable such discoveries as the original star clusters of the galaxy, including the Sun's birth cluster and solar siblings. Details of this survey were released in the monthly notices of the Astronomical Society and the Astronomy and Astrophysics Journal, with the project now aiming to increase its remit and answer some long-standing questions regarding the history of our Sun and the Milky Way. But with enough data, this project could potentially go far beyond a mere interstellar family reunion, as the discovery of our Sun siblings could actually help us to find life on other worlds. Four years before De Silva's technique was developed, Ivan Ramirez of the University of Texas claimed to have potentially found one of the Sun's siblings through a less efficient yet equally accurate method of chemical analysis. Back in 2014, a star by the name of HD 162826 was identified by Ramirez as being likely born of the same cloud of gas and dust as our Sun. This star can be found in the constellation Hercules, a short distance away from the star Vega, and Ramirez feels there is a small chance that these sibling stars could harbor life. He even goes so far as to suggest that planetary collisions could have taken place between worlds orbiting our Sun and its sister stars while we remained within our birth cluster, and that such collisions could have been responsible for bringing primitive life to Earth, with Ramirez quoted as saying, it could be argued that solar siblings are key candidates in the search for extraterrestrial life. The knowledge of where our Sun came from and how it was formed will aid our understanding of how the chemical composition of stars affects the prospects of life forming within their planetary systems. If we can identify stars with similar chemical compositions to our own, this will refine our search for life harboring solar systems and increase our chances of success. But there's one more interesting theory regarding our solar siblings which we've yet to mention, and it concerns the exact opposite of life itself. Because did you know that some scientists believe our star has an evil twin? It's true, with mathematical models suggesting that one of the stars born alongside our Sun may have been responsible for several of Earth's most devastating mass extinctions. We're going to explore this theory in our bonus video, Evil Twin which you can watch on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash strange mysteries. For a $2 a month pledge, which you can cancel at any time, you'll get to watch this and all of our bonus content, which goes deeper and darker into every topic than YouTube allows. If you don't want to donate, then that's bullshit. We know you wanted more. Strange mysteries on YouTube and our Patreon bonus videos weren't enough to quench your search for truth to give you that sense of awe and wonder again, to go past what you thought was the end, to give you the answers you seek, but which only lead to more questions. That's why we just up the stakes. Chemicals of reality. Reality, consciousness, brains. What else is there? Ask yourself that question. Perhaps that's all there really is, 
but perhaps everything else is found within a place where these ideas, these things, overlap. Some thing, some place that is undefinable. To many people, altering certain chemicals in their brains produces what they would simply call hallucinations. In fact, what we're going to discuss specifically used to be called the businessman's trip, as one could enjoy it. Come down and put your pants back on in the time it takes to eat lunch. It wasn't taken seriously. Well, unless, of course, you started digging. And some people, including us, did. Already, though, to many people, this chemical is special amongst others. Very special. To them, it represents something more meaningful and incredible, as if it's the gateway to the next level of consciousness. The ticket to a higher reality barely explored by most humans. It is the entry point to a new reality visited by only a select few whose minds have become enlightened through the use of this exotic substance. For this reason, it's commonly referred to as the spirit molecule. But is its reputation as a mystical mind opener deserved? Or is it and everything it represents just a load of bullshit? We look at, investigate, and dive deeply into nearly all available research regarding this question from nearly every angle feasible and in the course of doing so, stumble upon unexplainable patterns, correlations, and neurological evidence for a reality existing beyond this one. Watch this hour-long Strange Mysteries premium video, Chemicals of Reality, as well as many more to come by becoming an elite premium member of our Patreon at patreon.com slash strangemysteries.